Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna talk about AI-powered auto-constrain in Fusion. So this was something that was added in the January update, but it was rolled out slowly. So unless you haven't seen it yet, it'll show up as this automate option called auto-constrain when you're in the sketching environment. So what we're gonna talk about in this video is where I think the tool works and is very useful to a workflow and a couple of places where I don't think one, it doesn't work at all, or two, it's not very helpful. So I'm going to start out with a negative and give it sort of a worst case scenario where I don't think it works at all. So I'm going to start with a line. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to convert this line to a center line. So if you're defining a revolved part, let's say that you need to create something for a CNC lathe. So if we just, I'm just going to make a very uh, simplified example here, but if we're making something for a CNC lathe, and we use automate, when it generates these dimensions, you can continue to generate more, but I found that when you generate these dimensions, it is never going to treat the center line like a true center line. So for example, here it says 42.267. If I hit cancel and I manually do this dimension, what it's actually gonna give me is a diameter. So 85 millimeters. And if I do that again over here, this is one of the benefits of using center line. This is going to give me the ability to dimension this part at its full diameter value rather than going through the process of treating each one like a radius value and having to manually figure out what the diameter is or, or do some math and multiply things. So this is a case where I don't think the tool works just yet. I'm hopeful that they will update it and it will treat this like a true center line like it does when we're um, actually adding a dimension. And there are ways, so for example, uh, if we were going to add a dimension, let's go, and just, uh, let's go ahead and undo that. If we were going to add a dimension from the center line to here, I could right click and turn off the diameter dimension option, but by default, diameter is on when you're using a center line. So this is where, again, I think that some updates in the future will show some improvement in functionality here. So that's a case where right now, I don't think it works at all and you're much better off just doing it manually. A case where it's kind of 50-50 is when you have a basic prismatic part. And let's say that we're gonna maybe add some holes here. I'm gonna add some holes on the other side. And let's just call, let's just call it even with that and let's do automate. So in reality, when we start to define a part like this, Generally, what we do is we go back, and even if I generate more, it's, it's never going to come across the solution that I want. But what we end up needing to do is we need to give it horizontal constraints or symmetry constraints for each of these holes. And then we also need to make all of them equal. Uh, so again, this is a very manual process that we have to go through because it's never going to understand the relationships that we want to define for these. So it's not going to be able to say, okay, well, these are symmetric across here and we need to figure that out unless we give it some more of that information. So again, like we make a vertical line, make it construction. We maybe add a symmetry constraint between this circle, this circle, and that line. And then when we use automate, then it's going to start to know, okay, well, these are symmetric across and, and here are the numbers that we can use but in reality, I think with these simple prismatic examples, it's still going to be easier for you to just do it on your own simply because you have to continually give it additional input. And that back and forth of needing to make sure that the holes are symmetric across the midline or that they're all the same diameter, I just think in reality, you're much better off just giving it your own dimension scheme. Now, as these sketches become more complex, I can see that changing. And there was a comment on one of the videos about using it for a mesh section sketch. And I did play around with it and I think it's kind of hit or miss, but uh, you know, there's some promise there, but I think that I would still prefer to do it manually because I know how I want things dimensioned and I don't want to leave it up to the automated uh, AI, sort of AI constraint to do that for me. Now I'm going to get to the examples where I think it's actually beneficial. So when we're talking about doing, let's say complex surfacing, creating some complex curves. When we've got splines, and then um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and change this one handle and maybe move some points around until I'm happy with the shape like that. 
So once I'm happy with this spline, I can use automate to generate the dimensions for the entire thing. Now it's gonna, I've noticed that it gives me, we ran into a problem, we removed some results from time to time. But overall, this is a pretty good solution to generate a fully defined and fully constrained complex spline in a sketch. And I'm gonna give you one more example of this. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the control point spline. So I'm gonna do a couple of lines here and I come down here, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna make all three of these equal. This is typically what we do if we're trying to uh, fake G3 continuity in a sketch. I also wanna make each of them vertical. So I'm gonna give it a bit of information and then I'm gonna let it loose to go ahead and create those dimensions. Now, one thing I will say is I've noticed that it kind of, it leans more toward doing aligned dimensions rather than horizontal and vertical, which I typically would do if I'm trying to fully define a spline like this. But hopefully you can play around with some of the options it gives you and see if it gets to a good result. Now, in reality, if you're making a complex spline like this and all you really wanna do is lock it in place, then using this and giving you some dimensional options to do that is a great way. Uh, you know, so for example, I could get rid of this and say, well, really that can be horizontal and just play around with everything. So I think that the splines are probably the most beneficial use cases for me right now, for my own personal workflows. I think prismatic parts, it's a little hit or miss. I don't think that there's really a benefit to using the tool, at least on simple sketches. If your sketch becomes extremely complex, then maybe there's a, uh, you know, maybe there's a use case for that. But for right now, I think even these, I would still err on the side of doing it manually and making sure that you understand where those constraints are applied. And for the case of the revolved part, I just, I, it doesn't work right now. So until it is able to understand that this is a center line and give it a true diameter dimension, I don't think there's a real benefit there. When it figures that out, I think that this will be a, another one of those cases where it does make a lot of sense because a lot of times with these revolved parts, we lay them out quickly. Then we need to go back and add those dimensions. It would be really great if there was a way for it to maybe round the dimensions. So instead of, you know, 9.782, if it could round it to 10 millimeters, and then you could, you know, go back and, and tweak it from there. I think that would be really beneficial to give, to get everything to nice, nice round numbers and even numbers for certain types of features. Now, I will also do a video talking about the drawing updates. That's going to come in its own video. I'm still working out uh, some of the kinks on things like uh, it identifying the bolts and the hardware and things like that. Now, if you are new to Fusion and you're just getting started, we do have a website, learneverythingaboutdesign.com, that has uh, absolute beginner series videos. So if you don't know where to start and you're trying to figure out how to learn to do surface modeling or part modeling or forms or assemblies, um, we have content for all of that and we try to keep it reasonably priced. The entire bundle is $35 uh, each course on its own is about 10 bucks. So if you're looking for absolute beginner content, make sure that you do check out our website. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And if you have any questions on this stuff, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.